If you enjoyed the film about spider silk and want some more spider science, here is Dr. Chris Holland again answering some of your top spider questions. So Chris, how realistic is Spider-Man? Some of the things uh, have a little element of truth in it and some of them's not so much so. What we'd actually see is that Spider-Man wouldn't be able to fire silk out of his uh, web spinning devices. Spiders actually pull silk out of their bodies and so Spider-Man would have to sort of bungee jump and repel off the sides of buildings. Another example of the science behind Spider-Man would be when you see him on camera, he has quite thick threads that he swings around on. Now, if he was actually to use real spider silk, you wouldn't be able to see those threads on camera. They'd be too thin. They'd actually be about as thin as one millimeter in diameter would be enough for him to hang off. But obviously that doesn't show up on cameras, so they've made them a bit thicker. So how thin is real spider silk? Silk is so thin that it would only take the amount of silk as heavy as a Coke can to wrap around the entire world. And how strong is it? Scaling up the properties of spider silk to something a little bit larger, we'd actually be able to find that a spider web with thickness of around about this sort of pen would be able to stop a plane going at full speed. What is the difference between silkworm silk and spider silk? Spider silks tend to be very, very good to act as individual fibres, such as the spokes of a web, whereas silkworm silks are wrapped up together to make a cocoon, and we would call that a non-woven composite. And so their biological function determines their mechanical properties. Can you make clothes out of spider silk? Recently, they took a million spiders that they reeled over four years, and they managed to make a tablecloth. They tried that again, and another four years later, with another million spiders, they managed to make this beautiful silk cape. The model said that it felt very, very comfortable. Are all spiders poisonous? All spiders use venom to incapacitate their prey, but in the UK, the spider's venom and their fangs can't really sort of hurt any of us. But if you go to other parts of the world, such as Australia, for example, there are some spiders that can harm humans, but that's usually because you've stepped on them and they've taken a little exploratory bite. I'd rather they didn't. But how else can a spider defend itself? Spiders actually also show this really interesting process called autotomy, which is where they're able to eject a leg at will. So if a predator sort of grabs onto the leg of a spider, it can sort of pop it off and run away with the other seven. Does it grow back? Spiders are quite amazing at healing themselves. And because spiders shed their skin as they're growing in a series of molts, if a spider loses one of its legs, it can actually regrow that leg and it only takes another two molts before that leg is completely regrown, but it has to do it before it's an adult. Is it good to have spiders in your house? If we didn't have spiders at home, we'd have a lot more flies and a lot more crawling insects and I'd much prefer one spider to ten crawling insects in my house. <laughs>